This episode of Inside Louisiana Athletics is brought to you by Park Place Surgical Hospital. Hi, I'm Marcel Johnson. Tonight on Inside Louisiana Athletics, our Diamond Sports continue their hot streaks as our Darren Walker sits down with head coach Matt Deggs to discuss their offensive showcase this past weekend and look ahead to a big showdown against the Jaguars of South Alabama. But first, Louisiana softball stays dominant as head coach Jerry Glasgow is here to discuss their 61st straight conference series win. You're watching Inside Louisiana Athletics. Hello and welcome to Inside Louisiana Athletics. It's not every weekend that the Sunbelt Conference has a series of the magnitude that they had this weekend in softball. The 11-1 Raging Cajuns going to Troy, Alabama to face the 10-0 Trojans. And the Cajuns get a three-game sweep out of that one. Here now to talk about that and more is the head coach, Jerry Glasgow. So um, let's talk about uh, the specifics of the weekend in just a bit. Let's talk about the improvement of softball in the conference overall, because uh, it's gotta be good for your club to go and play a game of high stakes in the conference schedule, because let's face it, sometimes you, you can't do that. Yeah, it's really nice. There's a lot of uh, good teams in our conference this year. You look at the RPI, Troy's 32, Texas State's right in there behind them in the high 30s, and then uh, South Alabama's in the 40s. All those clubs have multiple wins over SEC teams, you know. Uh, South House beat Georgia, South House beat Alabama. Uh, Texas State has wins over Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. So really, um, really nice uh, when you get into that situation where you've got a good RPI each weekend, and then the reason they got those wins over SEC schools, they got great pitching staffs. Mm -hmm. And so that's really good for our hitters as we go into postseason. We'll have seen some really good pitching staffs and, and some nice arms that along the way, which is it's really good. Our conference is in a great place right now. It's one of the top softball conferences in the country. And, uh, you know, great coaching staffs throughout the whole conference. So I think we're just going to continue to see improvement. We're in the southern states. We're in a warm climate. It's a place where softball players want to go. So really good place for the Sun Belt. Let's go to Troy, Alabama and show you some of the highlights. Game one, uh, Caitlin Alderink with an RBI double to get things started in the second to give you a one nothing lead. Then she comes up again in the sixth, putting the ball in play to get another run in to put you up 2 nothing. But how important was it to kind of set the tone and get an, a lead on Troy in game one in the first couple innings? Yeah, I think it's important. Anytime you can get that lead, especially on the road, mm -hmm. get settled and get comfortable. Um, it's a huge factor, and you know the kids are the kids are just feeling good right now. They're seeing the ball well, and uh, they they were they were ready when the series started, confident, and so it was nice to get out there. And you know when you immediately start hitting a, a good pitcher like that, mm -hmm. you you pretty well know your batting practice was spot on, and and it gives you a little confidence going going deeper in the series. In the bottom of the sixth, Troy cuts the lead in half, but you guys had a huge response in the top of the seventh. Jay Gutierrez, Julie Rawls with back-to-back -back base hits to knock in runs, and now you're up five to one. How big was it to just snag that momentum right back? Yeah, it's, a, it's one of the things you take pride in as a ball club. When they score, we score. Mm -hmm. if, if they answer us, we answer them. Uh, you know, there's a lot of little, little things that good ball clubs do, and that's one of them. When, when you give up a run, go back, get it back. Summer Ellison goes the distance in this when she gives up two runs, strikes out seven, and you win it five to two. In game two, Kendra Lamb takes the circle. She walks two and then gives up a three-run homer in the first inning. But after that, phenomenal. I mean, she, she only gave up two hits until you took her out in the seventh inning. Really great job by her to come back and, and have the game she had. Yeah, she had a great performance. I mean, you know, she the second walk in the first inning was semi-intentional. You know, we got behind 2-0. Mm -hmm. Kids been red hot to clean up hitters. So let's go. Let's go to we we wanted to go on down to the five hole, which was a freshman, and we felt like we had a better advantage on her, better matchup. And then she answered with a good home run on an 0-2 pitch, and that. that you know, that's one of the few mistakes that I think we made in that game. Kendra, mm -hmm. she's been outstanding lately, and, and that was it was just an outstanding performance by her. And, and I think she put zeros on the board all the way to seventh inning. Exactly. So while she was shutting down the Trojans, Justice Mills caps a four-run third inning, a two-run homer that erased the deficit to put you up four to three. You extend the lead to eight to three, but give Troy credit. You knew they were going to fight. Uh, they battled back uh, in the bottom of the seventh. They cut it to eight-seven, but you bring in Summer to get that last out and shut things down. 
Yeah, just simple. When we, when we put uh, Kendra, we had to put her back in. We get no warm up pictures, mm -hmm. and and you know you wonder at that point like what she's thinking. You know what's going through her mind. She we take her out with an eight to three lead, put her back in as eight six with a runner on second to get a kind of a C and I single up the middle, um, and all of a sudden you know you're back there with a game on the line eight seven, and we had I think the six hole number twenty seven was up. And Ellison's got a devastating drop ball. Really hard to hit her drop ball out. And I like that matchup. And she come in, I think she threw one pitch and got the draw, got the ground ball right back to her and the game's over. Um, I may have actually got, I think that ground ball went to shortstop. May you made a great play, charged it hard mm -hmm. and uh, threw out at first. But and that, and that's a spot where Summer's great in those pressure moments. Mm -hmm. And that's where her veteran experience, it was good. It's just the best matchup. And so we went that way. But Lamb was outstanding in that game, really showed. Uh, a lot of the things that she's been working on hard. Mm -hmm. Game three on Monday, uh, you couldn't have asked for a better start and a beautiful day uh, on top of that. Uh, top of the first four consecutive base hits, each of them producing a run to put you up 4 nothing in the first. And then in the sixth, you really open things up. Uh, Bailey Curry, Sarah Bryan, Julie Rawls, all with RBI singles to score five runs. And you win that one 10 to 2 in six innings. Um, didn't have to sweat that one out quite as much as the day before. Yeah, you know, all four all four hits and RBIs were with two out in the first inning. And that's something we, you know, you another one of those little coaching things, you know, your two out hits, pick mm -hmm. each other up. And uh, Rawls started it with a single and then Mills and then right on down the line with all the rink and maybe Mayu. But, I mean, it's just to get four runs with two out, I think that was devastating. You know, that's, that's – and one at a time, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, uh, that was a really good start, and then they just kept playing, played all the way through, and got the lead. And then uh, summer went six innings, and Kander Lamb comes in, and and I believe got a one, two, three, seventh. It was a, it was just a really good performance by the by the pitching staff all weekend. I think I know the answer to this already, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Are you subscribe to the uh, hitting is contagious theory? Absolutely, no doubt about it. I mean, <laughs> you look at the hitting now; it's totally different offense, and same the same team, same. We train the same. It's just the kids are feeling good, and, mm -hmm. and they infect each other with enthusiasm and self-confidence, and that's what we're seeing. One of your players who's hitting the ball a lot lately is Kendall Talley. Her uh, streak ended at 15 games, but uh, a chance to start a new one. But just talk about her a little bit, not only uh, her effectiveness of hitting the ball, but being hit as well because she's taking a lot of those too. Yeah, well, she really gets up on top of the plate. And, you know, if you if you throw her in, you're going to hit her because mm -hmm. she gets right up there just as close as the rules allow her to get. And, and she's very effective uh, hitting that way. She can handle the inside pitch extremely well. So then she can, you know, cover the outside corner. A great hitter. And and here's the thing about Tally. I mean, she's come in here and worked really hard for now three years. And, you know, she's just gotten better and better. And she's developed her. She had always had a lot of talent. And now she's... And she's always been tough. She's mm -hmm. always been a resilient, a resilient kid with a lot of mental toughness and a lot of intelligence. She's an outstanding academic student. Mm -hmm. um, so all of a sudden now you're seeing all of her hard work uh, that you know come into play, and and then the results are just uh, really a, it's um, it's really fun and rewarding for a coach to see a kid that you know how hard they've been grinding behind mm -hmm. the scenes mm -hmm. to, to get a, actually come in and make that kind of impact on a ball club that she's made. So here are the numbers. The win streak, 17 games. Uh, last 10 were all on the road, 32-6 and six overall, 14-1 and one in conference play. And you just sweep Troy to take a commanding lead in the Sunbelt Conference standings. But I have to think that more importantly, uh, than any of those numbers is the progression and the improvement that has happened in the last two to three, maybe even four weeks. Yeah, I think I think it's a, a combination of a whole lot of things. You know, a lot of times hard work doesn't always immediately pay off. And sometimes there's a delay between the time you put in the hard work and then the time the results speak on the field. I think hard work, if you're, if you're a great athlete, if you have great athleticism and you work hard, it'll always pay off. If you're not a good athlete, you know, you see kids that, are, you know, sometimes you just don't have athletic ability and they can work as hard as they want and it doesn't help. Mm -hmm. But when you have great athletes like we do and they work really hard like they have, at some point you're going to see that take over and really help and, and show up in the win column and show up in the performance. And I think that we're at that point now where it's really starting to show off. Finally, uh, back at Lampson this weekend, uh, Texas State comes to town. 
The Bobcats were 8-0 before this weekend. Uh, they got swept by South Alabama. Uh, you mentioned this earlier. They have beaten Ole Miss. They have beaten Mississippi State. They have beaten Texas A&M. This is a formidable opponent that you're going to face this weekend. Yeah, you know, they ranked 23rd in the polls last week. The, this is a really good team, and they're coming off a series where they got swept by South Alabama. It's going to be a dogfight. It's mm -hmm. going to be a tough one. That great coach, Ricky Wood. Um, it's going to be a really good series. Our kids are ripe. To, you know, we can't have a letdown, right. and that's what we got to emphasize. We're going to take a day or two here and rest. Or we're exhausted. Uh, we're taking the day off. We'll probably take tomorrow off, and then we'll get ready for the series. They've got to be, you know, they've got to really refocus and re-energize because it's going to be a war this weekend, no doubt about it. All right, Coach, as always, thanks for the time. Appreciate you stopping by. And, of course, we'll have highlights and reaction with Coach Glasgow next week on Inside Louisiana Athletics. Next on Inside Louisiana Athletics, Darren Walker sits down with head coach Matt Deggs to discuss their upcoming series against the South Alabama Jaguars. This has got the steak and the sizzle. The tots on this are just crispy and they're flavorful. This will oh. keep you out of my tots. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheese Steaks. Yeah, this might keep me out of your tots. <laughs> The health and safety of our students is our main concern. That is why the Office of University Housing and Residential Life has developed new protocols and procedures to strengthen our efforts to protect you during this pandemic. Housing staff is trained and ready to carry out safety protocols and guidelines set by local and national health authorities. All common areas will be cleaned and sanitized often, and no more than two residents will share a bedroom and bathroom. These are just a few of the safety measures we are implementing to ensure that our priority is you. We all have dreams. I want to dance. I like to build things. I want to explore. For over 120 years, the University of Louisiana at Lafayette has made it possible for young dreams to become realities. So go ahead, dream big. We'll help you make those dreams come true. How is yours? Because you got the spicy cheesesteak. A little fire. A little fire. And desire. Oh, I don't know about all that. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheesesteaks. You're taking it too far. I know it's date day and all. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Athletics. The Raging Cajuns baseball team has now won nine of its last 11, including a series win over Arkansas State this past weekend. Louisiana now sitting atop the Sunbelt Conference standings as they set their sights on South Alabama this weekend. Before we get to that, though, we welcome in head coach Matt Deggs to kind of give us uh, his thoughts on the weekend series against the Red Wolves. You know, we sit here every week and we talk about these phenomenal pitching performances that you've been getting, and we're going to do that again. But the bats were uh, hot and alive this week. You scored 30 runs, uh, 38 hits, 11 of those were home runs. You got to like the direction that, that the offense is headed. Yeah, you're exactly right, Darren. I thought all along all year that when it heated up and, and we had a few more ABs under our belt that we'd, we'd be a pretty good offense and we'd get rolling offensively. And I think over this last, you know, eight game winning streak, you've started to see that some. And uh, our, our, our preseason schedule prepared us for the conference schedule and, mm -hmm. and we're seeing some of the fruits of that right now. Let's go to uh, Russo Park game one on Friday night. The Red Wolves really getting some swings in early on Spencer Aragetti. They played two runs in the third inning. But to your team's credit, you come back in the fourth with three, in the fifth with two, three in the sixth, two in the seventh to take a commanding 10-3 lead. And this is something that we've seen recently out of your team is when the opponent – gets a run here or there, you guys come right back and snag that momentum from Yeah, them. the hitters have been able to respond and punch back when they've gotten punched. And, uh, you know, Spence didn't 
didn't have his best stuff, but he grinded and battled and, and found a way to get through six and mm -hmm. give us a chance to to retake that lead, then kind of settled in a little bit. And then I thought Brandon Talley came in behind him and did a fantastic job. Sure did. Uh, great production from the bottom third of the order in this one. Jonathan Brandon reached base five times in this game. Brett Borgogno, uh, we talked about him a couple of weeks ago. He was two for four with five RBIs, and you're getting that from your number nine hitter. Just all weekend, the bottom of the order, you know, really six through nine uh, were really good all weekend long and continued to roll that thing back to the top. And and obviously, Connor Kemple had a big day yesterday, but Ben Fitzgerald uh, had, a, had a very good weekend mm -hmm. as well as uh, TR and, and – uh, you know, Bobby was was solid again. So to get production out of the bottom of the order makes that whole thing, it makes it longer, uh, makes the lineup deep, and it makes that whole thing go. One other name to add to that list is Brennan Bro. His bat yeah. is starting to get hot too. He's now on an eight-game hitting streak. Yeah, Brennan, a uh, little bit of a rough start and, and kind of had to grind and, and figure some things out, but kept coming, and uh, he's starting to play some good baseball. Game two on Saturday, Connor Cook was simply dominant. Complete game, two-hit shutout. First time that's been done since 2014. A guy you may remember, Carson Baranek. Yeah. Uh, 12 uh, strikeouts in this one. And I love what you said after the game when you talked about the young man and and how he really deserved this, how hard he works on and off the field. And then uh, one of those quotes that we're so uh, familiar with, the game paid him back. No doubt about it. And and. That was great to see. I love that kid. He he does it right on and off the field. He does so many things right that nobody ever sees. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know he's he's had it tough, and and he's he's continued to work and and figure out who he is and what he is on the mound. And he's an incredible student, uh, extremely hard worker, great teammate. Just a lot of superlatives about that kid, and uh, to see him finally put it, because he's got big league stuff, to see him finally put it all together was uh, remarkable, and I couldn't have been any more proud if it was my own kid. Connor Kimple, Brennan Bro with RBI base hits in this one. Tyler Robinson goes deep for the fifth time this year, as does Brett Borgogno and C.J. Willis, who both got their first home runs as Raging Cajuns. Yeah, and there's the bottom of the order thing again. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was huge to see. Uh, really wanting to get C.J. going. He's worked hard with Coach Talbot to make some adjustments, and uh, we saw some of that this weekend. Yeah, and he quite enjoyed his trip around the bases. <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty pumped up, wasn't he? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he's, it's been a frustrating, you know, he started so good and then kind of hit a little lull and, uh, he's made some adjustments, responded, and coming back. And Borgie's been gigantic for this ball club all year. Right. Uh, you win uh, the game nine to nothing. A bizarre Sunday is basically the only way uh, that you can summarize it uh, at at Russo. A sixteen to eleven Arkansas State win. Um, some incredible days at the plate for your club. Connor Kemple with five hits. Then Fitzgerald two home runs. Nick Hagedorn three for five. You had seven home runs on the day, but you just couldn't find that one guy who could you know, get out there on the mound and, and shut them down. Yeah, and it's, uh, I've said it from, you know, all along, this team's fun to watch. I mean, they're entertaining. <laughs> right. Uh, you don't quite know what you're going to get from game to game, but you are going to get your money's worth. And, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it was, it was, that's why baseball's so great. You, you show up and it, the likelihood of you seeing something you've never seen mm -hmm. is pretty good. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you know, to hit seven home runs, four in one inning, back to back to back at one point, uh, and then not be able to win, I mean, that's an anomaly. And it's, it's uh, but it's a team game. And if, if pitchers are scuffling, it's the hitter's job to pick them up. And, mm -hmm. and uh, pitchers have picked up the hitters countless times this year. <laughs> right. uh, but that's baseball. Uh, we could have made a couple of plays that would have been a difference, uh, but it just it, did, it just didn't work out for us. And that speaks to how hard an eight-game winning streak is or a nine or a 10 or whatever it might be. Arkansas State, scrappy, scrappy ball club too. Uh, a big conference series this weekend as you head to Mobile. Uh, the, the Jags were leading the East Division until this weekend. They get swept by Little Rock in Little Rock. Um, anytime these two teams get together, you can pretty much throw the records out of the window. Yeah, it'll be a, a great series. It'll be uh, very competitive, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, our goal starting off every year is, you know, 40 wins, top 25 RPI and conference champions. And that's what we're in the midst of working to do right now is, is win a league and it's one battle at a time. And so all of our focus right now, Darren, is on Friday night against South Al. 
you mentioned that word, you said competitive, and, and that's kind of where, where I was going with the last question. This sort of has that throwdown mm -hmm. feel to it, series. Yeah, and, you know, that's kind of uh, right up our alley as <laughs> right. <laughs> with this team, and, and uh, that's just their kind of party, so we'll be ready to go. All right, Coach, sounds good. Best of luck this weekend. Look forward to having you back next week. The Cajuns are 20 and 11 and lead the Sunbelt Conference right now. We'll have highlights and reaction on that South Alabama series next week on Inside Louisiana Athletics. are UL Lafayette's number one priority. That's why we're following guidelines set by national and local health experts to protect you during the COVID-19 pandemic. The university is reorganizing rooms and spaces to reinforce social distancing, sanitizing campus buildings, and mandating that everyone wears protective equipment. But don't take our word for it. Take a look for yourself at some of the many safety measures we're implementing, and you'll see that our priority is you. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco, Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Zydeco If you're happy and you know it Then your feet will surely show it If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco, Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it Nothing that will help you show it If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. 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 Like I would go with the signature strawberry limeade. Add in cranberry. It'll give you that kick like right there in the back. Sonic Ultimate Drink Stop. This muscle right here. That might be a little tart for me. You know, the faculty uh, will be impacted by advance. Uh, but, but really, the faculty are the ones who have driven for decades uh, this significant educational experience here. You know, it's their passion and their love of students that have made undergraduate research and creative works, uh, experiential learning in general, available to our undergraduate students. But this is going to provide a mechanism for faculty to reach more students and, and provide the resources so that these faculty can entice more students into uh, the experiential uh, learning experience. When it comes to um, professors, from a professor perspective, we are constantly looking to get students involved, you know, not just in the classroom. I mean, we, we want that student that's gonna raise their hand and engage, and we're actually looking though for not just that student, but for every student to engage in that same way. You know, that said, um, it takes a lot of resources to not just do our own work, but to train other students to do it. When I think about um, my lab, for example, there is a, there's kind of my line of research and what I would do if I were just doing my own work and not mentoring anybody. Um, and then there's all of the pieces involved in getting those students to engage in research in a meaningful way. There are um, you know, financial resources, there are training resources. If I want to teach my students not just psychology, but how to do research of psychology, and not just psychology, but my particular area of psychology, that's a big burden for me to overcome. Come. You know, I've got to convince them that it's important, um, which I think just having the advanced program in place does. Um, I've got to convince them or help them find resources, financial resources, so that they can take time off work or travel to a conference to present their work. Um, you know, and I've got to provide these fundamental skills that are about research that really aren't my expertise. Um, so what the advanced um, program does for UL Lafayette professors is it provides us with extra resources to support those students, providing them with, with uh, just the support of having an agency that's within the university that's entirely devoted to this little bit extra that they're trying to do.
All you have to do is you, this your drink, and your taste buds. Sounds like happiness. So many feels. All the feels. You do the shimmy when it meets expectations, and the head nod is I'm perfectly satisfied. Sonic Ultimate Drink Stop. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. You are UL Lafayette's number one priority. That's why we're following guidelines set by national and local health experts to protect you during the COVID-19 pandemic. The university is reorganizing rooms and spaces to reinforce social distancing, sanitizing campus buildings, and mandating that everyone wears protective equipment. But don't just take our word for it. Take a look for yourself at some of the many safety measures we're implementing, and you'll see that our priority is you. Like I would go with the signature strawberry limeade, add in cranberry. It'll give you that kick like right there in the back. Sonic Ultimate Drink Stop. This muscle right here. It might be a little tart for me. At past commencements, I've welcomed graduates to the finish line of their academic journeys. Tonight, in these surroundings, let me welcome you instead to the end zone. We will be awarding 320 degrees this evening, and it establishes a new university record of 3,610 academic degrees awarded this academic year. So graduates, you are part of an historic occasion. No matter what degree you are receiving tonight, you will play a role in the shape of things to come. Many of you may feel uncertain right now, and that's okay. But looking at you, I am filled with hope. The sun may be setting now, but a new dawn remains ahead, and you will lead us toward it. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you for being here, and go Cages. No, we couldn't have. You're right. I was going to say, we could have got one and shared, nah, that but that's that not wasn't true. Work. Sonic Extra Long Ultimate Cheese Steaks. That, that wouldn't work. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Inside Louisiana Athletics. Be sure to catch us next week for more Louisiana Raging Cajuns coverage. Go Cajuns.